Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. The question came up tonight was, how do we access the benefits that we get from moving when we're doing like a standing, uh, standing meditation where there's actual stillness? So how do we how do we get to that that place? So there's um, there is considerable benefit to sitting in stillness, and there's also a benefit to to uh, doing it standing also, just as there is in in the various forms of movement that we do. We primarily emphasize movement, and uh, I think uh, there's a good reason for that, and it's primarily because it gets the attention of your conscious mind and allows you to be more present because you're actually involved in an activity. So going back to the idea of um, like the, the default mode network in the brain, which is the part of the brain which is churning away when it's not task oriented which is most of the time. So even while you're sleeping, the default mode network is firing away and it is consuming, you know, about 20% of your body's resources. Um, whether you are running a marathon or you're, 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 you're fast asleep. So it's, um, you're, um, giving the mind something to do is the trick as I see it in getting out of the uh, compulsive mental churn that, that we can get into and to be able to learn to control attention because your ability to control your attention is at the foundation of just about anything you do. And it's, you know, I, I've described it before as probably your most important superpower is your capacity to control your attention. So we, when we're taking it into, a, into stillness, we're kind of upping the ante uh, a little bit here. We're, we're making or raising the bar. I mean, that's a better metaphor for that. So we're, we're, it's a little more difficult than it is to actually do stuff where you have a task, which is, oh, I'm going to lift my hand now and I'm going to feel myself lifting my hand. And, and when I'm doing that, then I'm, I have a task and it's easy to unplug the default mode network to do that and then allows me to move into a whole brain coherence. I can at least more of my, I'm using more of my mental, my, my brain functions than I am if I'm doing nothing, if I'm just sort of just hanging out and it's just whirring away on, uh, on, on automatic. So uh, the uh, I think the short answer to this, and it's something we're going to get into and actually do it, is we start by doing stuff and then make it smaller and smaller and smaller till the point where there's no apparent movement. But as Jonathan just pointed out um, in the um, in the pregame, it was is that you're make, still making micro adjustments, even if it's not visible to other, to other people. So it looks like you're in total stillness, but you're actually making micro adjustments. So what, what we'll do is we'll do, a, uh, we'll do a standing meditation and, um, and we'll start by you know, feeling the movements and then make it smaller, smaller, smaller until we get uh, until we get into that stillness. Okay, so why don't you stand up and let's uh, let's tackle that.
It's about, I think probably a, the best place to start for this is the place we ordinarily start anyway, which is the three pillars. Because this will enable you to get an even deeper understanding of what we're talking about here with that. So let's begin with the central equilibrium. And that is the ability to find that central pillar, that, that uh, sense of verticality that allows you to connect up to the energy of the earth and, and of the heavens and allows it to circulate through your body um, more efficiently. So to do this, let's, let's begin by feeling the balls of the feet. So when you do that and the knees are unlocked, so you're unlocked and you're feeling the balls of your feet. So just kind of rock forward uh, just a little bit so that so little that people would not notice if you were, if they were watching you, but there you are, you're, you're actually feeling that micro movement there. And when you do that, you are feeling into that the balls of the feet that allows the energy to come up through the, the bubbling well points, Yong Chuan in the, in the center of the foot. And then just rock back and just feel into the heel a little more. And then just slightly forward so you're feeling more in the balls of the feet. Feel your toes pressing down into the floor. Feel that connection with the earth. Allow yourself to sink. Release down and sink into the earth. Feel that like you're at the edge of the uh, at the edge of the beach. You're right there near where the water and the beach meet, and you feel every time a wave comes in, you feel yourself sinking deeper into the sand. You extend your awareness down through the feet and into the earth. And so there's actually just a very gentle rocking that's occurring, so slight that no one would notice. Each time you do that, you can bring your awareness back to that connection. And one of the, well, the fundamental ideas in Tai Chi is find the stillness in motion, find the motion in stillness. So here we're, we're exploring where stillness and motion meet. And when we look at it, even in stillness, there is motion. And even in motion, there's some stillness. We're just feeling into the earth now, feeling that connection. And opening the bubbling well gates in the feet. And if you feel a need to rock back into the heels, do it very subtly, 
so no one would even notice. And then feel back into the balls, feel back into the toes. So we're giving the mind, the brain, a task. And we're shifting from thinking about it to feeling it. And doing that allows us to shift awareness into the present moment. We're engaging a whole brain coherence and allows for us to shift into a super conscious state. And this is not something we cling to. We just move in and out, knowing that we can shift into that superconscious state anytime we want. Feel yourself sinking even more into the earth. Now reach up with the crown of your head. It's like you have an antenna there, and it's kind of seeking the, the true north. Reaching up there. And even that, there's micro calibrations. It's uh, kind of like whenever you look uh, with, your, with your eyes, there's something called a saccade, which is a, uh, the eyes shifting back and forth, which establishes depth of field. And it allows you to construct a three-dimensional reality with your, with your vision. And we're kind of doing something like that with our, the crown of the head, the knee wand there. We're reaching up and we're searching with that antenna. We're searching for the purest expression of yang chi from the heavens. You can extend upward and kind of feel there's an energy center that's about six inches above your head. So if you can feel that, use that as your, as your, your locator. It's like a kind of a, uh, insubstantial lens to look through. So you're reaching up there, and as you do that, you're lengthening your neck and opening the jade pillow gate. As we reach up with that crown of the head, opening the jade pillow gate and standing up through that, we're contacting that young, that pure young chi. And to do that, we're accessing the part of our awareness that is the shen, you know, the, the spirit part of the, of the, of the system, the, of the awareness, that which is beyond the mind, which knows without thinking. We're feeling into that yang chi of the heavens and simultaneously feeling the yin chi of the earth through the feet, allowing that to fill up. And Things are apparently still, but there's also motion and stillness. So we're still looking, we're still looking with that, with that antenna and changing ever so slightly to meet that 
Yang Chi. Feel your body relaxing, emptying out, letting go of tension. First of all, identifying the spots of tension in your body. And give them permission to release. So the, the Jade Pillow Gate allows us to tap into the Jingshan. And Jingshan is made up of two words, a Jing, which is the essence, the body essence. It's the expression of physicality and the Shen, which is spirit. So we're the Jingshan is where the spirit and body integrate. And we, by opening the Jade Pillow Gate, we create an opportunity for that to refine and expand itself. And as you're as you're standing with reaching with the crown, sinking with the feet, just feel your chin, just kind of gently opening and closing the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Feel it. So it's not a static thing. There's a conversation that's going on. micro adjustments occurring. This allows your, your spirit to expand and to become more involved with your physicality. Relax your lower back. And so here you drop your sacrum, drop your coccyx, and feel as you do that, not apparently moving at all, but there is some internal motion. As you do that, you're flattening out your lumbar curves up to a small degree. And doing so, you are aligning your pelvis so the pelvic bowl is, is centered and level. And reaching down with your coccyx, reaching up with the crown then lengthens your spine and creates space between there. So we're having some internal motion there too. Very, very slight, very tiny. But as you relax and release your muscular tension, you're feeling the vertebrae starting to separate ever so slightly, creating space between the joints. It also lengthens the dural tube, which is what contains the cerebral spinal fluid that, that nourishes and supports your brain and your spinal cord. And it makes that, the, that more coherent as well.
reach with your elbows a little bit. Ever so slight, just enough to release the shoulder joints. We're opening the shoulder joints too. Very small micro movements. If you find yourself having to shift into your heels, do it very quietly, very subtly. And make contact with the balls again whenever you feel comfortable doing that. You may find that there's tension in your calves if you don't do this a lot. And that's okay. Just rock back a little bit and just feel into the heels. Allow the calves to relax. Point with your index fingers. You can even move them ever so slightly to really establish that energetic coherence. Feel into your hands and notice the energy that's that's building up there. Feel the circulation in your, in your fingers. Feel the heat in your feet. Feel yourself pushing away from the earth without even moving, but just feel that kind of the effort to push away. So that you're pushing up toward the ceiling and then ah, settle down and spiral down to the left, spiral down to the right without moving, without physically doing that, but feel yourself engaging the muscles, engaging the connective tissue to do that so that you're releasing your quad, opening the hip joints, allowing the chi to flow through. Feel into wherever you might feel tight or constricted and just gently engage that area and move without moving. Just enough to bring your awareness to that area. Now feel your breath. Notice that you're always moving, even in stillness. Feel your diaphragm pressing down into your abdominal cavity. Feel your lungs expanding as you inhale, releasing as you exhale. Feel the pressure changing in your abdomen as you inhale and exhale. Notice that you're moving even without moving. Feel the pulse of your heart. Feel your heartbeat and feel into your circulatory system and feel the motion that's happening inside.
Now let, let all that go. And feel yourself embracing the state of pure being. You're shifting your awareness to awareness itself. No story, no narrative, no explanation, just now. begin to re-enter form, feel your feet, feel your knees, feel your hips, feel your shoulders, feel your head, feel your arms. Feel that all that movement that's occurring inside your body. Step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. Letting go of all that stuff. Take a seat, please. How'd we do? <laughs> yeah, 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 So uh, uh, give me a, a report here. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> Sharon. Okay. Um, I appreciated when you used the language locator. 
when we were working with the crown or the naywan that made a big difference for me just to kind of hold it that way mm, and find nice. it find it that way through that word nice nice thank you yeah. that's, that's good good i hadn't, hadn't hadn't thought about that recently but that uh, seemed to be seemed to be appropriate under the under the circumstances rick i was trying to be a helium balloon but I turned into a rock man. I was made completely out of stones. <laughs> I wanted to be light, but I was like heavier than I'd been in a long time. Uh, yeah, it was very weird. Usually I, can, usually I can access what I perceive as chi and become very light. But here it was just like, I was, I was a uh, Easter Island person. <laughs> a headstone <laughs> but the whole body a whole yeah the whole thing yeah yeah, yeah beautiful cool anybody else okay uh-huh <laughs> you're making a statement there valerina an important <laughs> statement. Yes. <laughs> it was sprouting everywhere. Out of me one. Sprouting from my feet. Yay. Yeah. You were say That's that. the closest I could find to describing what it felt like. Yeah. I, I, just, um, I guess. Nobody can see that. The difficulty for me will be like doing that without Rick. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Without the sort of reminder, you know, the, the, the giving me something to pay well, attention to. Right. Well, you, well, you can do what I do. I, I watch the episode over again on YouTube. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> There's that. That would be good, but that won't solve my problem of wanting to do it without Rick. <laughs> oh, practice makes practice yeah. makes perfect. Oh, that's true. It's, it's the formula. Yeah. That's true. That's true. It's a formula that I can build on. Yeah. 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 So, you know, what we're doing here is we're doing you know an intense you know adult dose you know to kind of let the body mind know that oh that there, there's something to pay attention to here and then you can you know you can then uh, you can find it again you know if you follow the follow the steps uh, yes, Nick? This is gonna come up completely the wall somewhere down the block but it, it it you, you brings to mind the notion of the Mandelbrot set, where it's a very simple equation, but okay. the iterations of that simple equation result in something really incredibly complex. Right. And this is this is the uh, behind uh, you know the fractal pictures that we that right. we see. So for people who. Uh, are unfam <laughs> unfamiliar with the mathematics, but most yeah, people have yeah. seen the seen the fractals and uh, you know that iterations upon iterations that there's a a core element, and then it expands and that expands and other things and everything feeds off of the other. But it's unpredictable which direction it's going to go based on the uh, on the core element. So it's kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a prelude and fugue that uh, that uh, open ended that goes on infinitely. Right, and it goes both ways. You 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 take a tiny portion and continue to zoom in, and take another tiny portion and zoom in, and it's always different, but always the same. And it's uh, and that's kind of what standing is for me in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, um, Jonathan, you got something? Yeah, it, it, it seems to me, um, a, a, I don't know, say a more engaging practice could be to stop somewhere in the Tai Chi form and just hold it. We, we talk about that a lot. I don't know how, I don't do it as much as I could, 
single whip with others. There's all these wonderful positions to just hold for five minutes or something. Um, and they all have a different feeling and character. I, I do know that the, the, the palm dancing feeling that Tai Chi has where you're really creating something is sort of my substitute for the Vipassana, you know, awareness of the breath. Uh, you know, you want to keep your attention on that. Thoughts are running around, but you keep coming back to the breath. But if, if you're maintaining that, that, that uh, you know, energy, that ball, that chi ball, and sometimes it's, you know, it's like an iron, it, it's so strong. That's, that takes your attention. That's a wonderful way to take your attention through a whole standing meditation. You're maintaining this structure. And if you can't, I mean, to lose it is, it would almost seem like nothing, but it, if you're, if you're not coherent and holding the form, you're going to lose it, but it also takes your attention, which is a good thing in any kind of standing meditation, because your attention wants to go all kinds of places, but that, that holding that, 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 those palms in opposition in, in the different forms, wherever you are, is, I think it's a wonderful substitute for the Vipassana with just being with the breath. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Richard. Um, I'm just wondering if um, we mislead ourselves by trying to achieve stillness in the absence of movement. To me, it seems as though they always coexist. Um, and, and this exercise, um, this ec in this exercise, everyone was very still and constantly moving. Uh, so I think I think sometimes we're trying to achieve something that's um, that's um, not possible. That's not written. Not oh, I don't know. We're trying to achieve something that doesn't exist, and that can be very frustrating. Uh, try, I mean, what I'm saying is that try, trying to be perfectly still, as the goal is to become perfectly still, is. Mm -hmm. We need to accept that 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 state does not exist. Uh, good, good point. Yeah, Lynn. Yeah, that I think that's a realization I had during this as well, right? That I maybe focus too much on still stillness versus moving stillness. Um, when you said right at the beginning, you know, funny reminded us of the very basic thing that I know, you know, movement and stillness, stillness and motion. Um, and it, it brings to mind a question I had. So when I was standing, my it, internally it felt like my hands were going do 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 do. I don't know if you can see that, kind of going do 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 forward and back, but they weren't moving. Um, but I could feel this sort of internal sort of motion, um, mm -hmm. and I was sort of, you know, aware of it and thought, am I supposed to stop this? Or am I supposed to, you know, you know, I guess like what other people do when they have motion like that, just go with it, you know, stop it, pay attention to it. Don't judge it, experience it. I think yeah, it depends I on what you're trying to accomplish in your standing. So I don't, I don't think there's a, a one ought to that fits all situations. I think it's a um, it's something that uh, what are we what are we looking for in this? And so in, in the phenomena you're talking about there, it's like, well, this is a curious thing that my body is doing here. And so you know, it sounds like it's responding to your internal pulse. So cool, you know. Uh, and you say, all right, do I want to control this or do I want to ride it? you get to choose, you know, you get to, it's, it's entirely up to you. You, it's your game and you get to play, you know, you are establishing the conditions for your meditation, you know, and, and I think that that's part of the beauty of this, this, this whole practice, this, the internal arts in general is that there is no right answer. You know, it's like, oh, what can we discover from doing this? What can we discover from doing that? It's like, it's a, and the more you can bring a, your attention into the moment and witness these things and say, oh, okay, that's interesting. Or it's not interesting. You get to, uh, you get to play with that. 
dude? Yeah, for me, it was like the stillness was simply the decision to hold a position in space. And, um, but then you said something about the spaces between your vertebrae. And so my attention went um, the opposite of what Rick was going through. Instead of getting really dense or solid, I got very light because I was, yeah, cool. like I was seeing the space that my form was occupying and the energy was moving through. So I think it's really changes a lot when you're meditating, uh, the, uh, what, 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 where your focus goes. Absolutely. Also, what medicine you need. Oh, that could be. You know, what, you know, if, you know, if you're, say, uh, in a very intellectual pursuit, your, your thoughts are very airy and uh, you're up here, then the medicine you need is more yin chi. And so you feel the woo. You feel yourself getting pulled down into substance to help balance out the, you know, the abstractness of your 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 thought, your thinking, and vice versa. If you find yourself, you know, uh, too constrained, then ah, uh, it's it's an opportunity for the young chi to expand and, and open up. Scott. Yeah, kind of, kind of going back to what Richard was talking about. I mean, there is, there's no, there are no absolutes. I mean, right? There's no, there's no absolute stillness. There can't be as long as you're alive. And that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I rediscovered doing this was how much movement there actually is just from your breathing, just from your heartbeat. I mean, there's, there's never going to be complete stillness. Right. You know. And it's yeah, like you said, just which one you want to focus on. But it was it was cool to read. Sometimes the energy chooses it for you, right? You know, because that's the energy you need. That's the that's the medicine you need for uh, you know in the moment. Jonathan, you had some. Well, yeah, to Richards and Scott, what they're saying that the the biggest mistake, from my understanding, that Vipassana people make when they sit in meditation is that attempt to to be still when. The instruction is to feel the breath through the whole body, because even if you're sitting with your hands like this, it's like tectonic plates crashing together. If you really feel that with your breath, or if your hands are on your thighs, you could ride your hands out and back in. That's all legitimate movement within meditation because you're not, you know, fidgeting. That's what the body is actually doing and, and feeling first, as, as Rick would say. So that holding that structure is another opportunity to feel the breath through the whole body. As, as one of my favorite teachers says, it should be more like, should feel more like sea kelp than some rigid stone, you know, when you're holding. Because that, th there is, as Scott is saying, and, and Richard's saying, there's this movement that's available to be felt. But who actually, unless you're really still in some way, you're not going to really recognize that subtle movement. Maybe your, your belly going in and out or feeling it through your nose, but it's going through your whole body and that's and that's kind of cool to, to to as rick would say feel first to feel into that uh right. takes your attention you know is a, is a good use for your attention as i say great richard uh the, does anyone else uh, this is kind of this is kind of strange i've never asked this question does anyone else uh meditate by imagining themselves doing a form Oh, I, 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 that, and there's you're very still but there's a whole lot of movement mm. yeah. Yeah. I, will, I will quite often um, when I'm you know not able to fall asleep very readily you know, just just by laying there and focusing on my breath does not do it. And I do the form in my head. And that relaxes the heck out of me. So yes, no, I, I do it quite often. I do, I um, play with a fan. There's a fan form that I do. 
<clears throat> you don't know how many times a day I do the fan form in my head <laughs> to just calm down, you know. And, and, to, and, to me, and to me, there's a great deal of movement in that, even though you're very still. Oh, yeah. And the movement is the, the movement. I think that the movement energizes the same circuits. Mm -hmm. so. yeah the deeper the deeper i go in inside myself the more complex it becomes <laughs> and the idea and the idea that anything is still at any time is not the case it's like what nick was saying about the the mandelbrot set there you know you're inside and outside it's it's you know uh both directions you're you know you're it's you know turtles all the way down but turtles all the way up too so right. uh, <laughs> yeah still stillness is only the point where the pendulum transitions right right so we have a couple of minutes left and i would like to pick up a point that jonathan made and just kind of expand on that and just to actually put this to work because what we did was really kind of a Wu Wei kind of kind of exercise there it was it was a, it was a it was a doing by it was a not do kind of a thing now let's do something with that and you know would we'll take a simple movement and use that to explore the feeling now we we'll just do that for a couple of minutes but just enough to uh, to feel into what it what it takes to uh, to do a, a stillness meditation from a particular posture. So why don't you stand up and we'll... Uh... How about we... Sink into your left foot, pick up your right foot, bring your right foot on the toe in front of you. Bring your arms up about shoulder height, your hands about shoulder height, elbows slightly lower. So we're in a universal post posture here. You're going to find your central equilibrium in this posture. You're feeling the balls of your feet. And you're particularly feeling the substantial leg, the left foot. Reach for the crown, open the jade pillow gate. And notice that it, it takes uh, a lot of movement to find the stillness. Reach with the elbows. Reach with the wrists. Relax your lower back. Allow your, your uh, coccyx to drop. Sink into the earth. Feel the softness in your hip joint. You're sinking down into the quad. Feel your spine lengthening as you expand upward. Find that locator. Reach up with your antenna there on the, the knee one. Find that locator right above you. Here. Using it so like a um, like a sight on a gun. You're using that to to tune in to that perfect expression of the yang chi. Feel yourself sinking into the earth and relaxing your body. At the same time, feel yourself expanding. So you're going both yin and yang. opening between the shoulder blades.
Feel the poles in opposition between your hands. Feel them pushing together and pulling apart simultaneously. Reach with your elbows and open the shoulder joints. Feel your breath. Feel yourself breathing into your toes, into your ears, into your fingers. Feel your diaphragm pressing down on your internal organs. Feel your breath. Feel your heartbeat. And press down. Feel the space as you move through it. Step back. Take a deep breath. And press down. And dissolve into the emptiness, letting go. Letting go of all that stuff. Seat. Yeah. Rick. No, I was just saying we have one minute. Okay, so uh, anyway, I'll just summarize that day. You know, so we're putting it to work there, and notice how how much came out of that couple of minutes of that standing posture. Once you've greased the wheels, you know, once you've already filled up with chi, and you've got it circulating, you're plugged into the big chi, then you put it to work, you say, okay, I'm going to hold this posture for a minute. And whoa, you know, cool stuff happens. And so, you know, building on what we've been talking about recently, you want to mobilize the chi before you move. And this is a way of mobilizing the chi. It's, you know, we you know talk about boom, you know, get your three pillars in fast. And so any time you spend you know, doing a stillness meditation where you're just focusing on the three pillars, it is providing a deep foundation for everything else we're doing. Cool. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you.